we are. I really want to talk to you guys about about remote learning and and especially as it relates to non neurotypical um, children and how how people are attempting to figure out how to accommodate um, ed- education for uh, for that. Do you? So I don't know. Where do you guys choose your own adventure? Where do you guys want to go? I think we have tons. We do you could want me cover. to go first, Claire? I do. I was actually just going to say that. Yeah, I can feel that. Um, so I think that there's a lot of children who are in school and just a lot of children growing up who have all different kinds of diagnosis and even not diagnoses that impact their ability to function in school as effective as possible. And so what that means is that you have children who really do qualify, they have diagnosis and they do qualify for an IEP, which is an individualized education plan. So they have specific services that are given to them at school. Um, And then you have children who are on something called a 504 plan, which is basically like if I have trouble attending, I might be able to get qualified or apply for a 504 plan. And that means that I have adaptations in the classroom to help me, you know, learn as best as I can. So you have all of these children who have difficulty with maybe regulation. So they have trouble like attending or they have more anxiety. And so how that impacts them on a daily life is is pretty significant. And even if I'm a really dysregulated child, so let's say I come in and my dysregulation appears um, as more like the symptoms might be more of like anxiety. So I have trouble being flexible. I need to stick to a certain routine. I don't like things that are new. I like things that are very familiar. So then I'm stuck in my house and I haven't had a specific diagnosis. So I haven't really gotten any help yet. Um, And my parents like know that I'm anxious, but they may not even have, you know, really recognized it. And now I'm at home And that's very new. And I don't have the structure that's given to me that school provides that predictability, perhaps. And maybe there are some better things about it. But, you know, there's also going to be some more challenges. And then you have this parent who's also trying to work, most likely from home, and deal with their child who is more anxiety prone and trying to keep this predictable schedule for them and give them what they need in terms of regulation. Because when you have a dysregulated child, you're going to have most likely meltdowns throughout the day or at least one meltdown throughout the day. And that can be, you know, like, you know, anywhere from like 10 minutes to like hours. And then what do you do with that child as a parent if you haven't been prepared necessarily uh, to deal with it? You haven't, you don't have a specific diagnosis, but now you just have this really dysregulated kid at home and you're supposed to maintain your responsibilities. And then also like, and it might be even more apparent to you now that your child has some sort of maybe processing issue. And this is where processing disorders come into play. Um, that you didn't really recognize before because oftentimes kids can even hold it together at school, meaning they can stay regulated at school. But as soon as they come home from school, they kind of lose it. So they can basically stay regulated for a certain period of time if they really, really try hard and they kind of overpower the regulation with um, the top part of the brain, which I'm totally spacing on, but it starts with a C. Are you talking about the cortex? Yeah, the cortex. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> I, even I knew that one, Natalie. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Smarty Pants, come on. <laughs> I was actually going to say stare above that. Side. So anyways, they, they think, they think, they think, and then they can't stay regulated anymore and they just lose it. So you're going to have parents at home with kids who are just dysregulated all the time. You nailed that. That's exactly Did right. I? <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. I have nothing to add with 504 stuff. You nailed it. Every time I talk to a parent, I mean, this seems like such a nightmare. And then also the idea of opening up schools seems like an absolute nightmare. Yeah, I mean, I have, so I have two kids. They both have individualized, sorry, individualized education plans. Um, my, my oldest son has ADHD and learning disabilities. And, you know, um, his ability to learn is really impacted when he's online because um, he, he looks at what other kids are doing in class to figure out what to do. And I think there's a lot of kids that do that. Like when, when they have a hard time processing all the information coming out, like Natalie was talking about earlier, um, especially when they're in a general education classroom, right. With all their typically developing peers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, a lot of times can't figure out how to ask for help. They can't formulate the sentences and maybe anxiety gets in the way a little bit too. Um, but they're also maybe having a hard time processing everything that's being said. So a lot of those kids look to what other kids are doing to figure out what to do. And so when you're at home, 
you can't do that, right? So what's happened a lot is like, here's an assignment, here's an assignment, here's an assignment. And, and, and I want to be really clear. I am, I'm not speaking negatively about his, like, his experience with school and his teachers. They were amazing. Um, everybody did the best they could in that circum- those circumstances. But I would say if it continues to be something like where you just post an assignment and it's like, hey, uh, you know, get that done. Even if you read instructions, he's not, he's self-directed but he's not going to be able to understand all the directions that are being spoken to him. And he can't watch what somebody else is doing to figure out what to do. And then there's like this intense feeling of failure, right? And you internalize that and you feel like, I mean, he, you know, could say that they feel like they're stupid. And um, yeah, I think that happened. That happens with him. I mean, when you, when you say that I, I, and I've, I've made this point granted as we pointed out, education was a, a, a lot different when I went through it and I'm I'm uh, um, probably unnecessarily um, bitter about my experience but but my take on the situation when I when I hear about some of like the homework assignments and stuff going out I'm like why why is there right. I was always told that kids needed to like develop social skills and that's what schools is so important but but I remember having to sit in a desk and listen to one adult talk at me the whole time. And if I tried to talk to kids, I got disciplined for it. So I was like, oh, where's the social skills? Oh, it's between class when I get a wedgie in the bathroom. Um, <laughs> ter- terrific. Um, <laughs> you sound like a popular kid. <laughs> but like during summer, I had a lovely social experience with with uh, kids and whatnot. And, and I I and I would uh, and I absolutely. I mean, the of course, domestic abuse is going to go up in all of the. This is this is going to be one of the most challenging periods of of our lifetimes. And I think we're talking about kind of as we're talking about reassessing priorities. I think that this becomes like a little bit of. It, when, when you say there's more than just the education, I think that's the important part of this conversation. If we all just admit that a lot of what this is, is about childcare, about people needing, about parents needing to work, about kids needing to be fed that don't have the resources. And so then you're talking about housing children during a pandemic, at least as much as you are about education. All of that I'm saying is that I think that you need to separate those things a little bit figure out what you're trying to do first which is like if you're trying to collect and feed kids in a safe distanced way in uh in a building then probably the school lessons get knocked down a little bit and the people that do get the lessons are the probably the kids that need a little more attention first would it in 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 a world where we only have so many resources and we're facing an incredible challenge. I, I agree with like kind of all of the points that are that are being brought up for whatever that's worth. Probably not much, but I mean that's all that I really want to hear. Um, <laughs> do you, do you I, want a little yeah. praise? Like yeah, good job. Just, like a little is, dude air five. Just, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I just I just did really poorly in school, and so I started this podcast to have smart people tell me that I'm a good boy and I'm actually smart and worth it. <laughs> 